Hello, and welcome to a new webcast that I'd like to call Kentucky Agriculture Works. Here, we are going to explore different sectors of agriculture and the career opportunities surrounding local food, fiber, and fuel production. My name is Jennifer Elwell, and I work with the Kentucky Agriculture and Environment in the Classroom in the Kentucky Agricultural Council. Today, we have Jamie Guffey, who is the Executive Director of the Kentucky Poultry Federation with us. And poultry and eggs are big business in Kentucky. It's the, brought in the most money from Kentucky farms to our economy at least the last nine out of 10 years. And uh, Jamie is going to tell us about he got involved in the poultry industry, uh, how important it is to Kentucky, and then what career opportunities are available through the poultry industry. So welcome, Jamie. Well, good morning, and thank you for having me today. Well, like Jennifer mentioned, I'm Jamie Guppy with the uh, Kentucky Poultry Federation. I've been working for the Kentucky Poultry Federation for over 10 years now. Uh, before I started working for the nonprofit side of the poultry industry, I worked on the ground with farmers raising chickens in the state of Kentucky. I started with broilers, which are basically the meat birds um, that we see at retail, whether they're the chicken nuggets or the chicken legs or what we're now going through, the chicken sandwich wars. So making those type products. And then from there, every opportunity I had to move up or broaden my knowledge on poultry, I went into the breeder side of the industry. And then from there, I moved into the pullet side of the industry, which, which I think is probably the most important part. You need a good start with your pullets because they lay the foundation for your products throughout the life of the, uh, the birds. So tell me real quick, what is a pullet? A pullet is a baby chick that you're going to raise to maturity and then get hatching eggs from that bird. Lucky we get day old pullets from co companies like Cobb, Hubbard, and Avigen, and they're our primary breeders. When you think of that, um, you think of like in Kentucky, the horse industry raising racehorses. These are the studs and the uh, the females that raise those babies that are going to be the horses for the uh, Kentucky Derby, which is coming up. Like I said earlier, Kentucky is currently, as of 2021, the second commodity in the state. We think 2023 we will take over and be the Kentucky's number one farm commodity, which means farmers in Kentucky make more money raising and selling their chicken, turkey, and eggs than any other commodity. But we're basically a $1.2 billion industry, and the broiler industry alone, which is those meat birds like we mentioned earlier, are second in, the, in Kentucky alone. We rank seventh nation, nationally with the broiler production. Well, the Kentucky Poultry Federation started in the 50s, and its goal was to promote and educate about the poultry industry at that time. We basically try to increase sales of chicken, turkey, eggs in the state of Kentucky, increase the number of products sold in the state, and help farmers as much as we can with education and profit on their farms. We work with the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. We work with other state and, and national organizations to further poultry in the state of Kentucky. Like I said earlier, we do a lot of different things from anything from classroom demonstrations where we cook eggs, we do ag day events. Um, we actually, for a nonprofit, we have regulatory duties. So we do subcontract with USDA to run Kentucky's NPIP program. Um, we're definitely an advocate for Kentucky's poultry industry where we work with companies, work with growers, and work with even people selling products to our farmers in the state of Kentucky. So what does NPIP mean? NPIP is the National Poultry Improvement Plan. It was set up to eliminate salmonella um, in hatching eggs or table eggs. From there, we moved into all poultry diseases and USDA subcontracts with the state organizations to administer that program. As you can tell from this map, if you lay a ruler on Somerset and Elizabethtown, 99% of the poultry in the state is to the west of that. So that's basically to the left on the map. Um, and the reason that is, is because we like to put the poultry where the corn and soybeans are. Poultry is one of the largest buyers of Kentucky grown corn and soybeans, and it's easier to have that product delivered straight to the feed mill than it is to buy it and bring it in any other way. 
So explain how that worked real quick. Do most of the poultry companies contract with local grain growers or do they just pull from local grain elevators? What's they What does that both. typically look like? They do both. For the most part, they try to buy from local grain providers, year-round contracts, um, but they do fill any shortfalls with other buyers. But for the most part, they want the local farmers to bring their product to the feed mill every day. Like I said, I've, I've worked with the poultry industry for almost 20 years now. In the last 10 years, I've been in this position. But the one thing that I've learned is change is inevitable. Change is everywhere. Even in the short period of time I've been working in my position, I've noticed a lot of change in the poultry community. Um, one of them being the age of Kentucky's poultry farmers are less than the national average of farmers. And, um, and then also the impact that females have on the farm, whether it's day-to-day -day activity, strategic planning, or the ones making those decisions from day to day, um, are have a larger presence on the farm. So we're letting more birds outside than ever, even broilers, not just the uh, access to pasture table egg birds. Uh, production's up. We're doing everything we can to foster and help promote our industry and give the customer, which is basically the end customers at the retail. Uh, whether that's McDonald's or Kroger's or KFC or Walmart, what they want. Uh, some of the companies that we work with, like I mentioned earlier, Cobb's our primary breeder. This is a genetic uh, operation. We have three of the uh, egg companies that are four actually now in, uh, egg companies in Kentucky. One of them, Calmaine, Hanson Brook, Egg Innovation, and Vital Farms. Vital Farms being our newest one we have and the one that's actually expanding currently. Um, CWT, you see on the screen also there in yellow, is a primary breeder, but they're only selling hatching eggs and most of their eggs will be going to Canada, California, and some in the Southwest. Um, we have one turkey producer that, or company in the state of Kentucky, Far Best. Uh, most of those products go to Indiana to be processed. Uh, as far as broilers, like I said, meat production, what broilers are, we have Purdue, Pilgrims, and Tyson. And as we was talking about those companies, those are global companies that we work with, but we also have to think about the local products because Kentucky's farmers are raising products that you buy every day, see every day in your grocery store, whether that's your Whole Foods, your Wild Eggs, or, or even your Walmarts. I mentioned Farbest earlier, their main supplier is to Boar's Head for those bunch meats. So they're not the Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter type bird. They're more of a, a sandwich meat product that's sold year round. Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, Yum Brands, Popeye, they've been huge in the chicken sandwich industry here lately. Um, and Kentucky's farmers are growing for those companies and you're buying that there. I do know when I worked for Keystone Foods, uh, when I first started, sub we were Subway's largest supplier of chicken. So if you bought chicken on the east, uh, east side of the Mississippi River, odds are it came out of Albany, Kentucky. Hmm. And you can't, you can't go anywhere without McDonald's. McDonald's is one of those where you know, they kind of drive the industry. Uh, one of the things we've seen with the farmers, like on this slide, um, since 2020, we've had a huge increase in cost to build poultry houses. Um, everybody's wanting to expand in Kentucky. We're just waiting for the prices to come down because labor's gone up, materials gone up, interest rates gone up. We are seeing since January of 2020 to what we did in Ju July of 22, is about a $5 increase per square foot in cost to build chicken houses. So that cost has gone up. It's really it's what's holding us back from really expanding and growing in the state of Kentucky. But like I mentioned earlier, I mean, I think opportunity is huge for the state of Kentucky. We've missed a few here lately with some facilities that were in Kentucky, looking at Kentucky, but I think we'll be uh, Kentucky's number one farm commodity again this year. I think with the aid of the new companies coming to Kentucky, we'll be a $1.6 billion industry. Our table egg organic industry will continue to grow. Um, we'll see more broilers raised outside in the state of Kentucky as well. And I think the best way to diversify and to bring your the next generation back to the farm is with poultry. It provides that potential income for that farmer to be able to do something with less than 50 acres. And if you can add it to your cattle business, your dairy business, where you're raising sheep and goats or your row crops, it's just value added.
Well, thanks for sharing that, Jamie. I know when we have met in the past, and uh, I remember you going through some of these things, one thing that you had mentioned is that the organic table eggs, we're, we're Kentucky is like one of the leaders. Can you speak more to that? Yes, those numbers are hard to capture, but we think we're either second and third in the nation with the access to pasture table um, bird, organic birds. Um, we have the climate. We have the farmers. Um, we have a very diverse background for Kentucky. So that fits really well where we're at. Um, one of the things that I wish we could have was a processor in the state. As of right now, all those eggs are leaving the state to be processed. So if there's a way that we can bring in either a breaker facility or a wash grade sanitized package facility in Kentucky, that would definitely help and add value to our Kentucky grown products. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about how, one, how you got involved in agriculture. What was your background? And then kind of what, what kind of led you into exploring the poultry industry as a career option? That's a very good question. Um, like most Kentuckians, uh, their first experience um, on the farm was with tobacco. My grandpa had a dairy and tobacco farm, and I spent my summers, spring breaks, Christmas breaks, working with my grandfather, uncle, and cousins on his tobacco and dairy farm. So whether we were milking cows, working in the tobacco patch, um, bailing, handling hay, we were able to do that. Um, and then from there, it just kind of growed. Um, as far as what I wanted to do, like if you see behind me, this is my home office. And, and I, I think the pictures I have behind me kind of is a snapshot of Kentucky agriculture. Like at the top, there's it's about tobacco. And beside it, you probably can't see, there's three tobacco sticks. So I just kind of had that from the old farm where we had, where we used to raise tobacco. And that was a huge part of me growing up. And beside that's a, a little rooster that was on my father-in-law's farm my wife took a picture of. So where tobacco was king, now poultry is. Uh, and then beside that, it shows where our roots are from, but still tractor tires. You know, a lot of people are using those as antiques now, or they use them on other stuff. But, you know, for decorations, that's always a good picture to have. You know, remember where your roots come from. But then cow-calf operation. I, I basically started my first operation where I was farming by myself was raising steers. Background during the summer while I was in college. Um, and then, of course, with the Kentucky Derby, Anywhere you go, when you talk about Kentucky, people either know KFC, which is the poultry industry. <laughs> they either know the Kentucky Derby or they know bourbon. So that's that's basically looking at victory uh, with the horse industry there. So that's basically a quick snapshot of, of what that is. But after I graduated high school, I wasn't ready to go to college yet. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. Needed some time. Um, I wanted to get away. So I decided to join the United States Marine Corps. And from there, I got my, tr my love for travel. So... I travel the world quite a bit with them and then with college and, and also per, uh, uh, personally. But um, I never lost the love for agriculture and working with my family. Um, so after I got out of the Marine Corps, I decided to go to school and get a degree in agriculture with a minor in business administration from Western Kentucky University. And from there, I worked in sales and service with the tobacco industry. I worked in sales and service with uh, the implements, whether that was Case New Holland or Weston Dorf. Um, and then from there, I, I moved on into farm loans. So I have a very diverse background. Um, and then from there, I started my own mowing and, and landscaping operation, which I really enjoy working outside. So very diverse operation. I, I came in when I started that business on a drought year, um, and I ended it on a drought year several years later when I started working for uh, Keystone Foods. Like I said, I, I started in the broiler industry. It's probably one of the best jobs in the, in the chicken business is working with farmers day to day. Uh, watching those birds grow um, and seeing what you can do with them. And then from there, any opportunity to come up to grow or expand, whether that was trainings at the University of Georgia, whether that was Auburn University trainings, online seminars, um, I did. And when an opportunity came up to move up or to, to, to do a lateral move, I said yes, because I knew it would do nothing but help me understand how that all comes together. So I, like I said, I worked with broilers, then the breeders, and then pullets, and then Working with Farm Bureau and CAP, of course, Kentucky Agricultural Leadership Program, um, it kind of broadened my knowledge on not just agriculture, but advocating and telling our story. So when this position came open with the uh, Poultry Federation, I applied. I didn't get the job at first. Actually, I applied again about a year later, and then I went, when I got the job, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. 
So I had a lot to learn. But once I got in the groove and got doing things, I learned how the job worked. Um, I learned what I needed to do. I learned what I was good at and how I could add flavor to certain things. Um, so that's when I became, you know, executive director of the Kentucky Poultry Federation, um, where we work with farmers, integrators, sales folks, work with the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. Uh, we work with national organizations as well, whether it's American Egg Board, United Egg Producers, um, National Chicken Council, Turkey Federation, or U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. And of course, we also work with USDA because and FDA because we are the official state agency for NPIP. Okay, so thinking thinking back even to when you, I guess any of your jobs in agriculture, what do you what do you think your personality traits were that really helped you move along in your career? I mean, what what kind of stands out to you as being you know what working with farmers or sales, you know, this is kind of what has helped me the most. That's a very good question. I think it's a little hard to answer, but um, what comes to mind, I wrote a couple of things down here, is not instantly saying no. A lot of times people are given a new ideal or something they think would be challenged by and their initial thought is no. So I always challenge myself was not to say no initially, think of how it would work and then evaluate it from that point. Um, but you got to be a great listener. you got to be able to listen, understand, and not just listen to wait for your turn to talk. It's basically listen so you can understand. I think me being an introvert kind of helped me listen a little better and kind of think over things before I respond. So I think that helped. But you got to be open to new things, and you got to be willing to accept challenges. So I think those things together is probably what helped me more than anything else. Besides the background that I got working, you know, not only in the United States Marine Corps, but on my grandfather's tobacco and dairy farm. The things I learned at a young age, I'm still using today, whether I realize it or not. So you've got to get out there. You've got to do it. You've got to try new things. And I guess the most important thing is show up, be there, because you'll learn things by accident if you just be there. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I was having this conversation with my son, who is an eighth grader right now. And, you know, we're kind of talking about uh, different careers that he seems to be really, um, you know, geared geared for you know his personality type um but we were kind of talking about maybe what it looks like behind the scenes you know how much paperwork you're going to have to do how much you know how much time are you going to have to spend behind a computer or at a desk as opposed to being out in the field so uh in the poultry industry so uh because Obviously, there are a limited number of jobs with our trade associations in Kentucky. We do have several, but a lot of them are, you know, small staffed and those opportunities come when somebody retires or, you know, somebody's ready to, to move on to the next thing. But looking at poultry production or egg production, what do you think are the the attractive things about this industry for young people? Well, I think we're very diverse and we're vertically integrated. So we have a lot of job opportunities for everyone. I think that's the most important takeaway that I can give. If you're interested in being outside and working with animals, then, you know, work on the livestock, whether it's breeders, pullets, um, broilers, or even in the hatchery. You know, those, those are all job opportunities. Uh, working in the feed mill, uh, working in the hatchery is a, another good one. Or there's there's plant jobs um, as far as you can be an inspector in the plant. I mean, we need USDA and FDA employees, federal employees at the plants to build the process. So, I mean, it's it's not just in the community. It's outside as well. Uh, truck drivers. That's a huge thing we always need. That's one of the that's one of the jobs that we're always hiring is truck drivers maintenance. So if you're an electrician, you're a plumber, you work on hydraulics or even what I'm going to call with maintenance IT because most of our, our processing stuff now is ran by computers. So our IT people are truly maintenance employees as well. So you can't forget those. But then you've also got your accounting, accountants. you got your HR folks, which is huge for our industry, um, and our finance folks. But you can't forget leadership. Regardless of any position that you're in, being a leader is a value. Being able to communicate effectively, being able to build, do a presentation, um, be able to help your, your employees when they're needing it. Um, but I mean, we've also got veterinarians, nutritionists um, that work on the live side as well. Um, we've got all kinds of jobs. There's so many things that I'm not thinking about. Just regular line workers. 
um, sanitation and cleaning. So every facility has a huge number of jobs. And, and I think the reason that it's so impactful to rural Kentucky is every county where we have a poultry processing plant, we are the number one employer in that county. So where are those counties? Well, where, all, where are all, the locations? Clinton County, Albany, Kentucky has a, has a plant. Um, there's one in Beaver Dam. There's one in Robards, Kentucky. And there's one in um, Mayfield, Kentucky. Because I kind of see that as something that's appealing to young people is I want to stay around home. I want to stay where my family is. So I think it's really important for those of us already in agriculture to make our young people more aware of where the job opportunities are. And if they seek out um, potential careers related to agriculture, that, you know, what what is available in my hometown? So if someone does live in an area where there's a processing facility or if there's a hatchery, you know, any part along the poultry chain, how do you think they can best prepare themselves um, for a job with one of those companies? I guess there's a couple of different ways that I can answer that question. If you're looking at being a farmer, then I would definitely find somebody that's growing birds now and learn it from them, using them as a mentor program, help them on the, when they're placing birds, when they're catching birds. So you can learn a lot just by being in the farm, see if it's something you definitely want to do. And I always give advice to somebody that's not been in the poultry industry before to find that person that they can mentor with, that they're going to be close to, um, to work with. And then if they enjoy it and the other farmer trusts them, he can take a weekend off and you can have weekend duties. That way you truly know that's something you want to do in the future. So getting as much experience hands-on as possible is probably the best thing that you can do if you want to grow. Um, but if you're looking at just working for a poultry company, um, taking FFA classes on, on the live side, whether uh, we have a poultry curriculum for the state of Kentucky that we've made with University of Kentucky and Ag Environment Classroom, that's definitely something you can review. It's got several modules, tests, quizzes, information in general just to broaden your knowledge on the poultry industry and how things work, all the way from getting a flock started to nutrition, to, to genetics, to processing, um, how that works. Um, but if you're if you're looking at doing it, going into accounting or financing or accounts receivable, accounts payable, um, truck drivers, maintenance, whether you're you know plumber, electrician, anything else, focus on those things. Get those experiences that you need, get your journeyman experience, get your license, and then apply to the facility and you'll be going. So I guess that was my next question. And we want to we want to be able to showcase a broad range of careers, things that do not uh, require a college education. Uh, so you had mentioned truck driver and, you know, some of those those trade skills that agriculture needs, just like every other industry does. But if you have a background in agriculture through FFA or, you know, living on a farm, working on a farm in your local community, how do you see that that would help somebody kind of get a leg up um, in starting their career? Well, my, my experience has always been, if you come from a farming background, you know how to work. So when you show up to work somewhere, they're not going to worry about you. They're going to teach you. They're going to get out of your way and let you work. So that's probably the best thing you do as far as just bring the experiences you have and be willing to take what you're good at and apply that and do a new procedure. Um, poultry companies, like like you said, and I said earlier, we have all kinds of jobs. We have a job for everybody, and whether you're college degree, whether you're doctored, or whether you're straight out of high school. We have a job for you, and we're able to, we're able to do that. Um, another thing that, that the poultry community has done that I've seen is travel. Like I mentioned earlier, I enjoy traveling. You can either join the military like I did to go see the world, or you can work for a poultry company because we're our worldwide organizations. And as long as you show up and show that you know what you're doing, promotions are there because we always hire from within if possible. And the opportunities to relocate are there, whether you're going to Georgia, Arkansas, Alabama, California, or to Europe or Asia. The opportunity is there for you to relocate and do what you want to do for a short period of time or a long period of time. So if someone is interested in uh, working within the poultry industry and they, they do want to go the college route, what would be your suggestion on things that they should study? First of all, if you have a degree, that gives you a leg up. I, I think that's a 
check on the box when you're applying that other people won't have that'll help you down the road as far as you further your career. So just getting a degree in general is beneficial. But if you can get an agriculture degree or an accounting degree or finance degree or a leadership degree, those would be uh, well on your way as well. Um, engineering, if you're looking into the uh, detailed type of work, um, or if you want to do the political science route because you're going to be an advocate or a lobbyist for the industry, that would work as well. So what other advice would you give to young people considering poultry as a career? I know you said a lot of great things about poultry, that there are a wealth of opportunities here in Kentucky um, for our young people within poultry. What other advice can you give them? Don't be scared to try something new. Try poultry. If it doesn't work, you can always find something else. But I think you'll like it once you get into it. Um, but be willing to learn. Be active. Be there. Be present. And if you're doing something, try to put 100% of everything that you do into what you're doing, because that only help you in the future. Well, Jamie Guffey, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing about Kentucky's poultry industry and all the job opportunities available and how one can go about getting their foot in the door. And uh, we just appreciate all you do. And if you are interested in learning more about the Kentucky Poultry Federation, please visit kypoultry.org. If you're interested in more about Kentucky agriculture and all of the different careers in Kentucky agriculture, uh, we do encourage you to also visit kyfoodandfarm.info and you can read about all different kinds of agricultural professionals. So thank you so much for joining us today at Kentucky Agriculture Works.